Okay. Thanks, Dylan. Okay. Okay, so again, we can figure out the rate of this reaction in, in radioactivity. That's called the activity. Okay, so again, that's the number of this nuclei that was disintegrated in a certain period of time. That's equal to rate cost K times the number of radioactive nuclei. So based on the activity, we want to figure out the energy released per nuclei that disintegrates. We can figure that out from uh, this equation here, E equals mc squared. And once we get that, let me go back a few slides. We can figure out the, we were looking at all those radiation units. Uh, this is this slide right here. Okay, so the radiation units, so a Curie is a unit of activity that's equal to 3.7 times 10 to 10 disintegrations per second. We want to find for our answer the number of the uh, radiation exposure REMS. Okay, so that's the abbreviation for Röntgen Equivalent Man. I guess this was done before, you know, I guess we call it human rather than man because we don't want to, we don't want to, you know, discriminate against women. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, a REM is equal to a RAD, which is a radiation absorbed dose times the relative biological effect. So note that a RAD is equal to 10 to the minus 2 joules per kilogram of tissue. So a RAD really tells us the energy which we're exposed to per kilogram of uh, living tissue. Okay. And then the relative biological effect, that depends on the type of radiation. So we said that the lowest RBE are beta particles, the highest are alpha particles. So relatively speaking, it's actually safer to be, if you're going to be exposed to one or the other, it's actually safer to be exposed to beta particles than the alpha particles because Alpha particles are a type of ionized radiation. Okay, so let's start our our calculation here. So from here, let's calculate our rate. So the rate is equal to the rate constant K times N. So for the rate constant K, that's equal to what was the formula that relates Rate cost of K to T1 hat. Uh, T1 hat equals 0.693. Okay, so this is only for a first order reaction. Okay, so again, only use this for a first order, first order reaction. Okay. okay, so we can calculate the rate cost of K, so K is equal to 0.693 divided by T1 half, or 1.28 times 10 to the ninth years. So K is equal to 5.414 times 10 to the minus 10 years to the minus 1. And then for, for n, what should we use put in here? Yeah, here it is. This is the number that Dylan calculated earlier. Really. Okay, so for n, that's going to be 2.59 times 10 to the 20th. Okay, so this gives us the number of potassium-40 nuclei which disintegrates in one year. So 
times 10 to the 1.02? Oh, 1.02. Times 10 to the 11. Okay, so this is the number of potassium 40 nuclei which disintegrates in one year. Is this a fast rate or a slow rate? Now it seems fast because 10 to the 11 nuclei is a big number, but in terms of moles, is this a big number of moles or a small number of moles? They're very small. So this, this is actually a pretty slow rate. So when we go back to the rate cost of K, note that 10 to the minus 10 uh, years to the minus 1. This is a very slow rate cost of K. Then if we think about it a little bit more, the Earth is about 4 or 5 billion years old, depending on, on who you ask. So how much potassium 40 in your body was present five billion years ago. My body. Did anyone go to did anyone go to uh, Mr. Perkins math talk on Friday on infinity? Yes. Yeah. Oh so this question of how much how much potassium was was present in when the earth was born was another philosophical question similar to similar to infinity. Yeah, so anyway, if we do this, if you were to plot the number of nuclei over time, remember this from, remember this from uh, our rate loss? So the half-life, okay, so this is uh, one half here. So this is the first half-life. Okay, this is T one half. And then, when half of this has been has decayed, it goes down to a quarter. So this is the second half life. And as we keep on going, then we go to the third half life, the fourth half life. So let's see, one half of uh, one fourth is is uh, yeah, one eighth. So now we're at our third half life, and so on. So let's see. If the Earth is five billion years old, and the half life is 1.28 billion years, that's going to be about how many half lives has potassium 40 undergone since the Earth was born? Okay, about four half lives. So let's see. We do we do three half lives here. So let's see. So half of one eighth is one sixteenth. So really. One sixteenth is what about um, uh, six or seven percent? So seven percent of the potassium forty when the Earth was born is still around. So I'm not quite sure what that means. <laughs> That's a long time. Ago. Okay. So this is the number of uh, potassium forty nuclei which generates in a year. Now let's figure out how much energy is produced when one potassium forty nucleus disintegrates. So we know that when the potassium forty nucleus is two point eight two two times ten to the minus thirty one kilograms is destroyed. So we'll call this instead of and we'll call it delta n. Okay, so let's plug in. This number in this equation, figure out the amount of energy, energy produced. Okay, so we're going to have, we have, let's see, 2.822 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And then let's multiply by the speed of light, and that's equal to 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And we got to square that number.
So we'll see George Blue be going to my four. And credit minus 14. So note if you have, let's see, a kilogram meter squared per second squared is equal to a joule. So this tells us that when one nucleus of potassium 40 undergoes radioactive decay, that amount of energy is released. Okay, so let's do this. We have. Okay, so we have 1.402 times 10 to the 11 nuclei disintegrate in one year. And you just calculated the amount of energy which is released when one nucleus undergoes radioactive decay. So that was 2.5. 2.544 times 10 to the minus uh, 10 to the minus what was that again? 14. 10 to the minus 14 joules per nucleus. So note that the nuclei is uh, This is the amount of joules per year. Okay, so this amount of energy released in one year. Okay, now, let's go back to that conversion. We said that one rad is equal to 10 to the minus 2 joules per kilogram of tissue. So, if one rad is equal to 10 to the minus 2 joules per kilogram of tissue, and then we said that a human, in this example, is 70 kilograms, this will give us the number of uh, rads, which is a radiation absorbed dose. Because if you have 10 to the 11 times 10 to the minus 14, that should be 10 to the minus 3. So that's the other one again. Okay, so 5.09 times 10 to the minus 4. Now, again, did you multiply 10 to the minus 2 times 70? Okay. So then you, because 10 to the minus 2 times 70 is equal to 0.7. So you take that number divided by 0.7, you got this number? I got 0.005. 0.005. Okay, so the relative biological effect of a beta particle, so the RBE for a beta particle. equals 1, so when we look at REMS, so if we have uh, 5.09 times 10 to the minus 3 rads, in this case here, a rad equals the same as a REM, okay, because note again, if you have, if a REM is equal to a rad times the RBE, and the RBE equals 1, Okay, so this this case, 
the same way one a rad equals one rem times the RD which equals one. And let's convert from rems to millirems. Let's see, one uh, rem is equal to 1,000 millirems. And finally, we have our answer. And that's going to equal. Yeah, so 5 times 10 minus 3 times. A thousand is equal to yeah, five point zero nine millirems. So of the one hundred thirty millirems per year of natural background radiation, five millirems comes from 